what uh, we will do in this next 20 minutes. Um, of course, when you hear eight minutes per day, keep the blood away, it sounds like, okay, that can't work because eight minutes is not much. What you can expect today, uh, next photo, please, is um, that uh, I will show you a funny video that you already know. <laughs> then we will talk about why is it so difficult to change and why are habits and patterns um, so important for us to understand why we can't change past. Then uh, I will tell you why I don't like diets, because they don't work. Um, and then we will talk about aging, not only about uh, you know, the skin, but also about um, other parts of the skin. And then we will come to the workouts. So I'll show you some funny workouts. I can also send you those uh, workouts per email. So you don't have to write everything down or keep it in mind. I'll just give you an email and then you can um, ask me for the exercises. I also show you two uh, workouts. We already talked about the cat in India because you usually take a long time from one place to the other, especially in Delhi. So I show you my cat workout. I really do that. Every time I sit in a cab and I have to wait in the traffic, um, I do this workout, so I share it with you. And then I'll give you some tips for healthy food and some easy ways to pimp your food. And then we're done. <laughs> okay, so let's see this video. And I want you uh, to tell me why is this sea elephant doing what he's doing? <laughs> Perhaps you know it. Um, the thing is, or the problem is our brain. 
like we have um, one part of our brain that is working automatically, and uh, the other one is like we have to reflect, we have to make decisions, and it's it's an effort. So, like when we have um, salty food or sugar, it is like um, activating our reward system that we have to know. Um, and we also have to practice our willpower, like a muscle. Uh, we have to try to get stronger, also in in the willing of doing things. Yeah. The funny thing is, that I started not to eat chocolate, and it was difficult. But after three weeks, I can promise you, our brain is starting to change. So habits uh, start to change after three weeks. So be strong for three weeks, and we'll get a little bit easier after that. Hmm. Um, and then there is the 80-20 rule. Do you know this? Yes. yes. I really forget that all the time. Because I'm like doing many things, and in the end of the day, they, it doesn't change anything. Like, um, I think we all have those, um, those things where we put too much time in and they don't change anything. So that's also um, a matter of, uh, or a problem for our health. Yeah, so what I told you about the brain. Um, I don't know if you know, like 50% of what we do, we don't have to think about. It's a habit, like brushing, brushing the teeth. If we wouldn't do it, it would be strange. So we do it, we don't think about it. Before we go to bed, uh, we brush our teeth. Um, and you, for sure you have a lot of those habits in your life. And it's very easy, it makes the, uh, life much more easy. But we don't only have good habits. So for example, who of you is watching TV and eating? <laughs> hey, you are already very good. That's not a good habit. Yeah. It's a habit. I mean, oh, are you saying it's a habit? Oh. Yes, it's a habit because we, we, like, for example, when I watch TV and I don't eat, it feels wrong because I always eat when I watch TV. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. You know, it's like I'm used to it, so I do it. But they go together. Yes, they go together. <laughs> and this combination of habits is what we can change. And that's what I really um, tried in my own life. I tried to combine habits that are already there. Okay, next one. So, for example, when I brush my teeth, that's a habit, right? We have this habit of brushing. I do squats, like I stand there and do this one, and I'm brushing my teeth. Or I'm doing, I'm rolling a towel, mm -hmm. and I stand on it, and I just do this. <laughs> like this. So I do my workout in the bathroom. So that's one thing. I never take a shower without doing a short workout in the morning. That sounds strange, but it really helps, because if you take a shower, if you take breakfast, if you go to work, it gets more difficult during the day. If you do it right in, in the morning before you take a shower, it will be easier. Because the shower is your habit. You do it, I hope. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, now I'm in the shower. So this is, I take a shower. What can I do? I can also take a new habit. And that is to take a cold shower after the cold shower. So I really, I am, right now I do 60 seconds of cold shower. In Delhi it's not that cold, that's very nice. In Germany it used to be much colder the water. But you can do it, you can combine the shower with a cold shower and you will improve uh, your immune system. Yeah, I don't uh, take breakfast without praying. That's uh, very important to me because I forget it very uh, fast during the day to be thankful and just to breathe and just to stop thinking and doing things. Uh, and now I have a new habit. Uh, when I watch TV, I eat frozen yogurt. <laughs> so I stopped eating chocolate, I eat frozen yogurt instead. So that are small um, you know, exa uh, examples of how to change habits. It's, you can't change other things, but I think I really, uh, it really works if you use your habits. And one habit that I really like, I uh, had some trouble first, but give a compliment. We women are always thinking about what is wrong with us. We always search mistakes in our face or in our body. And if you say something nice to another person, it will help you. Okay, next one. Okay, why I don't like diets? Um, yeah, you all know it doesn't work. I don't know anybody who's doing a diet and 
uh, is keeping the weight or is reducing the weight for long term. So the problem is if you do, like for example, Weight Watchers, do people know it here? Yeah. yeah. It's for one year. Most of people do it for one year. The problem is if you are changing your life not for three to five years, it won't change the way the body works. So everything you do for from five to uh, from three to five years, you will stay fit till you are 80. I promise you. So people who keep their uh, 60 or 50 kilos, whatever, and they keep it till they till five years are over, they will be fit till the age. So that's why diets can't work. They only are for one year, for three weeks. And they don't really change the way our body is uh, working. Yeah, then another very funny thing. Um, there are studies that uh, show that we don't really know what we are eating. Like what you see here, most of us are aware of only 60% of what we are eating during the day. That's quite funny because I did this um, experiment with my friends and I asked them to write down everything they eat. And I also asked somebody who's living with them to write down <laughs> what they eat. And it's not the same, because we don't really, um, we aren't aware of all the snacks, the drinks in between. And that's why I think it's good to take only three meals. Because then you don't do this snacking thing all the time. Because when you eat, you eat, and after that you have five hours of break and your body really can come down and um, it will be much better. Yeah, and then of course the TV and the internet. When we are watching TV, we are eating more. That's, that's for sure. I'm so watching you and I'm eating, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think that's something else. <laughs> uh, you're eating a good habit. She's giving you a good uh, habit. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm sure you're eating very healthy food right now, so. <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it's really interesting, like this, there are a lot of studies that show that since we are watching TV and using the mobile phone all the time, we yeah. don't really sit down and talk, like we're talking, we are talking now, okay, I talk, but you talk too. So um, it's like uh, we are eating and don't realize, we're taking more and more, and we don't really stop. I don't know if it's only with me, but when I start eating, I eat and eat and I eat. Whatever I find in the fridge, I start eating and eating, though I'm not hungry. And that is because most of the times we don't wait for, uh, for 10 or 20 minutes because then we wouldn't be hungry anymore because we aren't. But the system takes some time. So stop watching TV and stop using your mobile when you are eating, it will help a lot. And um, I really want to uh, ask you to write this nutrition diary because it will help you to find the reasons perhaps why you don't, uh, or you eat more than you want. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm all for it uh, when it uh, comes to long uh, and realistic goals. So if you like, you heard, take a goal that is able to do in three to five years. That's the best one because uh, usually we want to lose weight because the summer is coming. Um, we want to look good in a wedding or whatever. But um, the long distance goals are always better, and we all know that. But uh, and I, I really I threw away my scale. I don't have any scale. I have one jeans, and I I promised myself to be able to wear these jeans twice in the year. So I often <laughs> I often look if it's okay or not, and it helps because it's like uh, a scale is, is stupid. It doesn't really help. It's just you know it's no fun to use it. Okay, and then it's always good to, to uh, have a picture or something that reminds you of your goal. So I have it on my fridge, I'm sure you know. Uh, it's always like, good to have it somewhere where you see what you are wanting to do. And it's always too good to fight together. Like when you change things, go to your best friend, ask her to join you, and uh, then it's easier. Yeah. Okay, that's my brother and me. Um, we did this, do you know this uh, mother race, right? It's, it was like being a child again. And that's what I really like about sports. You have to find a sport that you really like. I think if you are going there and you don't really enjoy it, it doesn't make any sense. So find a sport where you really know you enjoy it, you can do it with your friends. And um, all the sports that you see there uh, are real, um, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, 
the result of studies. So you will get smarter, you will look younger, younger you will be happier, you will, you will be mentally stronger, healthier, more attractive, less stressed, more successful, and of course you will have much more fun and better memories. Yes. So it's always good to move. Okay, the aging. I don't know, did you know? I didn't. I knew that when I'm 25, I will get, like, my body is getting more old, or how do you say, it's, it's aging faster. Uh, <clears throat> but also, the bone substance is reducing. This is quite scary. So, from 25, it goes, like, down. And um, when you are 40, or one day we will be 40, then the m amount of muscles reduces um, every year, like 1%. It doesn't sound much, but it is, because people are eating the, the same, they are um, not really working out, like my parents, they don't do anything, and then they are 70 and they have this osteoporosis, and like you see, one of four women over six, 70 has this, and this is like um, one reason why I think we should do more weightlifting. I know weightlifting is not very popular. Um, who is doing weightlifting here? Oh, that's great, so a lot. Uh, women always are scared of muscles, or not always, but some are scared of muscles, but it's really good because it's keeping the bone structure, like when you are doing weightlifting, uh, you can do something, something against this reduced bone structure. And you also have less back pain, and you will not get small in the age, you know. And there are a lot of reasons why weight training is very good. Okay. So now, these are the two easiest workouts. I call it the body tuner and the hundreds. So the hundreds is my favorite. I did uh, it this morning. You do hundreds, you do it? Yeah, that's great. So uh, you know the hundreds? Okay, I'll show you. Thank you. So the hundreds is like you do a hundred of push-ups. You don't do a hundred of push-ups like you do hundreds, but you go you can do the woman, you know, the woman thing. So you go down like this, and you do this. And you do, I don't know how many. You do and do, and when you can't do it anymore, you just take a break for five to 10 seconds. And then you go and you count uh, like I have done now, 97, right? So you do, so do, do show them the full, because some of them they can do Okay, the you can do well. the full. Yeah. But it's easier for the woman most of the time. So you can do the hundreds of push-ups. <laughs> uh, you can do this. And like uh, um, I told you, when you do like, for example, you do 20. And then you take a break. But only 5 to 10 seconds, not more. And then you count and, and until you got 100. And you can do that with sit-ups. You can do that with uh, squats. With every exercise you know. And I'm, or, uh, you know how it feels, it's really effective. Yeah. So the other one is uh, like a circle. So you do five to 10 push-ups. Then you do jumping, like with a rope, two minutes. And then you do 20 sit-ups. And you repeat it until you are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Almost dead. <laughs> okay, next one. So uh, what I like is um, we used to, do the exercises we like. Like, for example, um, my triceps, triceps is not very strong, I don't like to do it. I like biceps, that's easier. So we tend to do the same workouts every time. To avoid that, I would um, suggest to do like five days, and every, every day you take another muscle group. This is one example. So for the back, I do the running uh, minutes, I would like to, you to stand up, you won't do much, so just, <laughs> just to understand the system. Um, so, we start walking, like you see, 30 seconds, easy running, easy running, you can also walk, then it's 20 seconds faster and you lose your arms, and then you do 10 seconds, of very fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like 30 seconds running, 20 seconds fast running, 10 seconds sprint. I'm already quite uh, exhausted after that, but then we do like one minute push-ups. 
And you can do it again. Like you can do 30, uh, 30 seconds normal, 20 seconds faster, and then you do the little ones very fast. You can also do just normal. Okay, let's do it again. 30 seconds, we do only a few, so you, I'm sure you ate something. <laughs> and then faster. And you should use your arms and faster. Yes. Okay, you understood? You can sit down again. Um, <laughs> so, then we can do push-ups with moving hands. I'm sure you know it. <laughs> so you go down. You can do the normal one. And you can also do the plank if you want. Like this. And then you go forward and up. If you go here, it's harder than if you go here. Okay. Okay, so then we run again. You can also jump if you like. And um, then you do the uh, push up position. You can hold it or you can walk again to the front and back. Then running again and then the lower back pedaling. That's when you lie on your stomach and you're doing this with the feet and the arms. So this is one example, and the next folder shows you that you can do the same thing for your core. So you are running again a minute, then you do sit-ups. The thing about sit-ups is um, we often do it wrong. I often see people doing this, like they are doing sit-ups with their legs. So if you are doing sit-ups, uh, try to get another tempo, like I show you. Um, if you're doing, for example, five slow and five fast, you can you can do it like this. You can also do it like this. But try to use like different tempos. And you can also do small ones. You find the hardest uh, um, situation. How do you say position? Position. And you do small ones. Sometimes the small ones are more effective than big ones because we are doing like how often I see this. And this is not really for the apps. Um, plank is always always a good thing. And what I really like is uh, crisscross. You know crisscross? It's like you do this, and you also do this with the hands. Oh, what also is good is like one leg down, one leg up. So you do a lot of things. Oh, what I really like is you do three steps like from the bottom to the knee. Hmm. This one I really like. So you have a lot of um, different uh, exercises you can do. Um, and you also can change it. Like for example, the one I told you like from the feet calf knee. So there are alternatives you can do. And I sometimes like repeat it and then you really have a training and you are you are happy to eat something because you're really ready. So um, I won't uh, continue all the next folders. I can send it to you, but you can just, <clears throat> yeah. For the legs, I compare the running with uh, squats and jumping lounges and those exercises. Uh, shoulders, uh, like I told you, I can send you those. Okay, yes, you can. Can you send it to me? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, biceps, triceps, uh, same thing. You can use a chair and do the dips, you know, like when you push yourself up and down. Um, and I always take water the bottles. When I'm not in the gym, like um, when I'm at home, I take water bottles to do the triceps. Uh, when you do the, the biceps, try to do small ones. Like not this, like small ones in the middle. And if you go down, try to squeeze up when you're here. Try it once. When you squeeze here in the end, you go down, squeeze. You'll feel a difference. And when you do the small ones, little, little, very little, then you feel it more here. So just take your water bottles. Yeah. Yeah, my cap workout. I'll show you my cap workout. I really like it. Sometimes people look strange. Especially when I'm driving, then I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs>
Jeep are really there, you know, but in India everybody stares, so you don't. <laughs> so you just, um, you, we can do it together. So you sit, and you, you imagine you are a turtle. So a turtle does look who is there and goes back. And you feel it here, it's straight when you go back. You know, you do this. You go front, you go back. And what does this do? For the neck, <laughs> for the neck. It's really good. Does it make your neck thinner? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you can also go to the left. Where is the tongue? What? In the mouth. In the neck. <laughs> Walk. Like there are studies that even if you only have half an hour, go for a walk 
because it really will increase um, your immune system and will change the, the way the body tensions and everything. If you need a video, I did some six minute videos, or even one eight, I think. Uh, I can send it to you. Um, I'll give you my card. Even the other workouts, I can send it to you, so it will be much easier. Um, yes. Yeah. The thing is, uh, with our food, we can do a lot of sports. I have a lot of friends, and, and I belong to this group too. I, I train a lot, but I eat a lot. If I eat more than I train, it won't help because twenty percent is made by sports and 80% is what we eat. So that's sad, but it's true. Okay, so this recipe, I can send you two. Um, I really like the sweet cremonades. Did you ever try it? I love it. It's with apple and cinnamon, it's so great. Um, and even kale salad, I love kale salad. Um, and the best one um, concerning uh, health is, you know quark? No, curd. Curd? Okay, in Germany we have quark. It's like, it's great, but I, I don't find it here. So, uh, curd, you take fresh lemon um, juice, like you squeeze, uh, squeeze the lemon. Flaxseed oil is the best oil for salad. You put it in the curd. Uh, berries, seeds, vanilla or cinnamon, and honey. Um, this is a recipe I got from a doctor who is healing cancer. And there are studies that is really helping to take off the injuries of your body. Um, yeah, other things are like sweet potato, you know, there's, there's some protein pancakes that are really good. Quark is curd. Yeah, quark is like pig curd. Pig curd. Yes, it, it has more protein. Ah. Um, is, it like is, is it like Greek yogurt? Is it like Greek yogurt? It goes in this direction. You can make it yourself, I can also send you a video how to make a quark out of yogurt. Is it yogurt? Hmm? Is it like yogurt? Yes, 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 it goes in this direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not from here. Not from here. Yeah. Not cottages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just hung curd. No, yeah, curd. So. You can you can also use curd, mm -hmm. but curd has less, uh, you know. But you can also use curd. Um, yeah. And then a few things that you should try. I don't eat any wheat anymore because wheat is causing injuries. Uh, since the 50s, 60s, it has changed. So we are using a wheat flour that's not really wheat. Uh, so I use almond flour for baking, that's really good. You have to combine it though. Uh, Amaranth, quinoa, millet, or bucket wheat. Wheat is also very good. Yeah, I make my muesli. You see my, um, I don't know the name, Mule? No, Mühle? <laughs> I don't know the English name. So I put my corn in this thing and I have my own muesli. I put it in with uh, water overnight and it takes like two minutes. And it's, it's really good because you have the, the um, the proteins and everything you need out of the corn, and it's not like, because it's not eaten, it's really healthy. Um, yeah, then the, I used to drink a lot of Diet Coke. It's not easy to stop. <laughs> um, but what is really very uh, unhealthy is to uh, drink like soft drinks, but also juices. Don't drink juices. Here in India, I meet a lot of people who drink juices and say, okay, then I don't have to, have to eat fruits. But nobody can drink eight oranges at one time and expect that the body is getting some help of uh, this, you know? So eat fruits. It won't help you when you drink fruits. Um, hidden sugars, please watch the ingredients. It's like crazy when you watch the uh, ingredients and it says, okay, there's only one sugar, like fruit puzzle. But they are like, I think, yeah, there are 12 different kinds of sugars and you won't recognize it because the name is like, for me sometimes even it, it's like, like it, Chinese because you don't know the word. And they find new ones. Every week they find a new sugar and, and, um, and in the end you eat more sugar than you know. Uh, Self-made ice cream, I'm sure you know that. Banana with yogurt and peanut butter or uh, I, I use um, I keep a banana in the freezer, and then I put some yogurt and uh, some um, cocoa powder, and it's really good, it's easy. Dark chocolate is very healthy, so every chocolate over 70% with cocoa you can eat. Um, ginger in the morning, I eat one centimeter fresh. It's not very tasty, you can put some honey and pepper on it when you want, <laughs> I don't know if it's better. But it really helps, especially when you live in a big city and there's a lot of pollution. 
Um, yeah, sea salt, not the regular one. And um, you should use a lot of. I'm finished, huh? Yeah. You should use a lot of like um, vanilla, cinnamon, curcuma dots. I can send it to you. That's no problem. I think. Take the last one. Last folder. Yeah. That's my last folder because I like this picture. Um, we were not always very self-critically. We searched like uh, I ate too much today, so I have a uh, bigger belly. And the man, he, like my husband, he looks in the mirror and he always says, "I'm I'm fine. What do you want? I'm perfect." And if I ask like a group of men, they are always very happy about themselves. <laughs> so relax, see what is good, uh, like your body, enjoy yourself, and don't take everything too serious. So. Uh, enjoy food, enjoy sports, and change two habits, then I'm happy. Thank you. Well, I'm Candice Camille, and I'm probably going to sum up. I do everything she say, by the way, um, that's with it. So what I want to ask you guys a question, because I'm just going to sum up, and I'm going to give you eight things that you can do daily. Um, because one of the things about losing weight it's just like your keys, eventually you're gonna find it back. So you have to go into just being well. So in terms of what it is that you like to do. So by a show of hands, how many of you would like to lose two inches in two minutes? Anybody? So I want anybody to stand up. Stand up, if you can sit down. This is about movement. So we're gonna do a little movement. So one of the things about getting the body aligned, and Tabitha talked about it, um, and it's basically, um, and I say this, I call it engage. So I want you guys to remember the word engage when you think about this. So what you want to do is you want to get the girls up, right? So you want to get your chest up, but more so on your shoulders back, the same way that she says on the chair, right? You want to hold your core in, and you want to squeeze your booty cheeks. Because at the end of the day, it's just a girl thing, and you look cute doing it, right? So that's what it is. But you want to put your shoulders down, and you want to breathe in it. So that's what it is. So if you hold your stomach in, squeeze your glute muscles, and lift your chest up with your shoulders down and back, it pretty much aligns the body, but you gotta breathe, breathe, yeah. You gotta breathe. And if you do that all the time, because you figure if you let go, um, you're just sort of hanging. So that pretty much keeps you up and ready just for your day. So even if you would've started trying to put your fingers down your waist without holding your stomach in, and let it go. So there's your two inches. So the key is, is that you absolutely have to do it all the time to keep it off. So thank you ladies, have a seat. But anyway, I'm Candace Camille. I'm known as the Willologist. Um, and just a little bit about me, that um, I'm a grandmother of five, mom of two. Um, I have a 42 year old daughter and a 38 year old son. So, you know, I'm telling in my other sessions, my daughter, I had her when I was two, you know, so um, one of the things, so I am a new 60, by the way, so when she talked about osteoporosis and the things that you have to do, so by age, chronological, 63 years old, so if you know what you're doing now, so if all of you have a mirror in your pocket, does anybody have a mirror in their pocket? So one thing I want you to do is look in the mirror when you get home or when you get back to your room and let your 80 year old self look back at you. And what will that 80 year old self tell you right now with what you're doing to your body as it relates to movement, eating, sleeping, what would she say to you? How are you going to look at 80? How are you going to feel at 80? Because a lot of things that she says when we do things for three to five years that we get to be the way we want. But you have to know what you want. Do you just want to release weight? Do you just want to get in a size four? Like what is it that you want when you go on to change your life as it relates to food and movement? So even in that 80-20 rule, and you talk about what does that really mean? That means that five days a week I need to get really, really healthy and good. And two days a week I can treat myself, not cheat, because you can't cheat on you. So, but you can treat yourself. And in changing the way you eat, everybody's formula is not the same. You have to find your formula and what's good for your body. My one plus one truly does not equal your two. So you have to find your two. 
The fact that I don't eat wheat or I can't eat eggs, it might not work that way for you. So you have to find what's good for you. Across the board, nutritional-wise and superfood and all of that stuff, we know all the things that we should be eating, right? So even some of the stuff that she talked about, and we all know about it, right? Do you eat it every day? Why? And that's it. So a thing that we don't think that this is good stuff is not for us. It's, you know, I'm not eating. You know, my, some of my friends ask me, well, what do you eat? Grass and ice. That's, that's what they think we eat as for being healthy. But being healthy just means you find the foods that you like. You have to find what's good for you, no matter what. The same thing in exercises, and even all the exercises. If you have knee problems, there's certain things you can't do until you build it back up. I'm a marathoner, just like her. I still run marathons to this day, simply because I like it. You have to find something that's going to be fun for you. And you have to go back to being that little girl when it comes to exercise. See, as adults, we forget to play. Like, when was the last time you just played, or you skipped, or you jumped? You know, think about it. We're so busy in the entrepreneurial world, trying to build business, trying to make money, we forget about our bodies. And one of the things that you do, you don't realize is that your body, your business, your bank, it goes together. That's the anatomy that you have to deal with. So I'm coming in on the mind game as it relates to how you change your outer appearance. See, because here's the deal, ladies. You cannot get your body tight if your mind ain't right. So that's pretty much the way to go. We can get down and we can do exercises all day. We can change the way we eat. But if you don't change what you believe and change your standard, you will always fall back on that. So just like she talked about diets, right? For 20, for 20 months, for two months, or drinking a shake. You cannot get what you need in terms of health in a bottle. You can't get it in a pill. You can't get it in a shake. You know, our bodies were designed to eat food. You know, whole food. It should be good to you. It should be orgasmic. That's how I look at it. It should make your head go back and curl your toes. That's just what food should be. It's one of those pleasures of life. So even for the good foods, but you gotta find what's good for you in terms of it. If you're eating crap, you know, that's carbohydrates, you know, you got refined sugars, you got additives, and you got processed food. Crap. Crap in, crap out. You can't expect, like I talked about yesterday, to look like a million dollars and eat off the dollar menu. You have to figure out what it is for you to change. And that's in terms of what you eat, because that's the basis of how you're gonna feel. We really are what we eat. You know, so even for me, I was an ice cream junkie. Just for my background, I used to be 215 pounds. So, and that was 28 years ago. So I've been this size for 28 years. So when you do something for three to five years, yes, you stay. And just because you're 40 and your hormonal structure change doesn't mean we have to look like a barrel. It does not. So if we are going through menopause and, you know, perimenopausal where things just starts to change on us, it doesn't have to be that way. It's some things that you can do and some of the exercises we talked about that you can do. But here's one of the things that I'm known for is planking. You know, I'm called against the planker in my, in my world. You know, so I plank every day. There's three exercises um, that you should do every day if you don't have a routine, especially in the entrepreneurial world where you're so busy. So let me ask you guys this, you got a minute? Because it only takes one minute to change the course of your well-being. And I chose planking and I see them up here simply because the plank touches six muscles in your body at one time. So if you can hold your body weight up, right? Planking the way that she did it, for one minute, one minute a day, and work your way up to three minutes a day. So y'all want something quick and fast like the microwave, right? One minute a day of planking up to three minutes a day of planking. If you do it for 90 days straight, you put your body in a fat burning zone. 
So even for the HIT, uh, what we call the HIT exercises, the high intensity interval training, that's what it does for your body continuously. So it's, it's that 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds, you do that in one to three minutes a day. I have been planking for 495 days straight, because I'm going in the Guinness Book of World Records of planking every day. So today, this morning, I planked for 40 minutes, but I didn't start off that way. I started off with 10 seconds. So, does anybody in here know how to do a plank? Come on up here, show us how we do a plank. Come on, let's plank. As a matter of fact, who else want to plank? Come on, I got room up here for like four people. Listen, if you want to take action and you want to do something different, today is the day. So how many of you are here to change to learn how to do something different? Anybody? If that's you, then you need to be up here. Don't be scared. Come on, change your life today. One minute. Anybody else got a minute? You got a minute. You got to have a minute. You got to have a minute for yourself. Come on, ladies. <laughs> Let's just do this thing, right? So here's the deal, right? So, yeah, right here. We're going to just get down on the floor, right here, right? So we're going to put our elbows right here. We're going to put our feet up, and we're going to hold our body up right here, right? So this right here, come on, stretch out. All right, come on, join us, everybody. Well, careful, watch the camera. So right here, we are planking. So now, I'm going to pass the mic, and that will just give us our minute of what we're doing. So tell me who you are. Okay. I'm Megna. Okay, Megna. I'm Falcony. Come on. Oh. I'm all right, who else? What, give your name. Arpita. Come on, y'all, tell your name. Debra. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm so, so basically, this is what this is when you talk about the things that you do, you can do in one minute. We probably have been down here for about 30 seconds, right? Y'all feeling this? Yeah. So you think you can do this for a minute a day? So because one of the things, let me just talk, and we're going to stay up here. Because I told y'all I've been playing for an hour, right? So here's the deal. What you can do for, 40, for one minute a day is down here, call your body weight up, and just get this done, right? So we're done. Thank you, ladies. That is your minute. you got to give yourself a round of applause simply because you did that. And not only that, tell me what you feel. Because you get energy in a split second, instantly. I want to tell you that I used to do this exercise, but in the last year, I stopped. It was very difficult to me to go back. Go back to, so today was the day. Today yes. is day one. Congratulations to that. It gives you instant energy. It, it, releases, it reduces your back pain. Listen, these shoulders that I got, they just hot. So it depends on what it is that you want when you do it. And if I can do it at this thing, I'm a manifestation of what's possible. Anybody can do it. All you have to do is make the decision to get it done one minute at a time. That's all you need. So now, since we're still up in here, y'all here, let me show you the other one that you could do, which is the squatting. Don't go away. You know? So look, which is the squatting. Because that's another thing that you should do every single day. Because again, these are the biggest muscles on our body, right? So one of the things you want to do as you do this is you sit back, right? And then you pull up from your hip. Watch, make sure that your knee don't come over your toes. And just sit down, like she said, and brush your teeth and bring it up. Go down and bring it up. That's it. Go down. But when you come up, you want to make sure you squeeze your glute muscles. Because we, we, some of us is fighting time and gravity and some fighting both. So we get to bring that back up, you know, to the top. That's how we go. That's what's squatting. So those are some of the things that you can do. That's right. Nobody need to just sit, push it back. And then pull it out. That's it. And that's basically how there you go. Perfect squat right there. And that's basically how. Yes, yes. So, and that's how you do it. So, your tush got to get back here. And then you pull up from your hip. There you go, from your hip. And when you get to the top, you squeeze. You sit back, you come up, you squeeze. Everybody can do that, right? One minute. 
So that's some of the things you have to do a day. So now I'm gonna give you eight strategies to do every day, and then I'm gonna be done, because she pretty much covered everything. So I want you to have a seat, get out your pen. I'm gonna give you eight things that you can do every single day. Um, I just wanted to say, I, as soon as I did the plan, I was just telling them that I have that severe pain. Not it went away. Absolutely. That's Absolute what it does. Time, the benefits time. outweighs the discomfort at, on any given time when you do that. You know, so um, I have a running record with my son who's 38. He hasn't caught me yet. Right now he can only plank for 20 minutes and I can plank for an hour. So therefore, you know, the more you do it, because practice brings progress, the more you do it, the more you can do. So that was one of the things I came up with my clients, simply because they were so busy. So if you're busy, you're an entrepreneur, I say sitting is the new smoking. It's a bad habit. As an entrepreneur, we get behind our computers and we go to town, stay in there 12 to 14 hours a day, and you don't get up. I love Fitbit. It makes you move. So now you can add the plank to 250 movements every hour, and that'll get you from behind your desk. So here's the things that you have to do daily. So could you imagine visiting eight doctors every day? Could anybody? Because we go to the doctor to heal, correct? Right, am I right about that? When you go to the doctor, you go to get medicine, you go to heal. So what if I told you you can visit these eight doctors at home by yourself? Because it's going to heal you for the rest of your life is gonna keep you in that well space. So the first doctor is Dr. Spiritual, right? So again, this is us dancing in our minds. So you gotta have a source to a higher power. And then there's Dr. Meditation, right? So you gotta be still. There is such a richness in being still. When we pray, we talk to God. When we sit still, we hear from God. So you gotta meditate, you gotta be quiet to own your truths. The third doctor is Dr. Nutrition. She talked about like this. You have to eat the rainbow. If your meal plan is beige and white, it's not right. You gotta make sure that you're eating colorful, nutrient, whole foods. If it's low fat, no fat, all of that stuff is all chemical based. Eat whole foods. You don't want to put chemicals in your body. You want to stay as close to the earth as possible. I am a cancer conqueror of 27 years. How I beat cancer, how I healed my bodies was through whole foods and movement. So that brings us to the next doctor which we talked about is doctor exercise. You gotta move. Movement does not occur until when? Anybody? Until you move. <laughs> See, simple. It does not occur until you move. You have to do something daily. My clients say, well, do I have to do this every day? And I asked her, well, do you eat every day? Good answer, right? You know, well, do I have to do it on the weekend? I was like, so what happens on Saturday and Sunday? You go lay in the coffin? Like what? <laughs> no, life still goes on and you still have to take care of yourself. You know, my friends here that's now tease me because every morning I get up, I go run, I go to the gym, or I plank, one or the other. I still do it. Just because you're away from home doesn't mean that your routine change. You just find something to fit into your routine. So it still has to take place. The next doctor is Dr. Hydration. Water is the elixir of the gods. You gotta drink water. I saw many people that don't. You gotta drink the water, right? And the next thing you have to do is you gotta get outside. You gotta get some air and sunshine. There's so many healing benefits to that, right? And the, the seventh doctor is Dr. Fun, Dr. Social. You gotta have some fun. You know, we forget to laugh. You just have to have a belly busting laugh on any given day. Let me hear y'all laugh. Somebody just laugh just because. <laughs> 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 Absolutely, it has healing powers. You know, you gotta laugh. 
It's either you're going to laugh or cry, and I choose to cry. See, we've been talking about this for so long. And my grandmother always said to me, you know, she called me Red, and she said, Red, you know, you got to stop selling wolf tickets. You're talking too much. So you're going to either talk or you're going to move your butt. Which one is it? You're going to move your butt. That's what she used to say, but she wasn't that nice about it, but I'm, I'm going to scale it down. She was like, so you're either going to talk or you're going to move your butt. So that means that you're going to do something about what you say you want to do. So what is your self-integrity? We keep saying we're going to do it on a Monday. Monday never come. Next thing you know, we sick. Then we're going to do it. We do it for a little while. But when you change how you feel about yourself and make you the most important thing in your life, it becomes systematic, automatic, just like breathing. That's what this should be. The love affair with you should be just like breathing. When you get up, you know I got to eat better. You know I got to pray. You know I have to meditate. It should be just like that. In my day, I've done all of them except for sleep by 12 o'clock. You get to fill it in where you get it in. There is this all miss about when things need to be done. You got 24 hours to get it in. That's just how that works. When you put it in, get it in, it's strictly up to you and your schedule. If in the business world, you schedule me in to have a meeting with you, you're going to meet with me. Schedule yourself in to have a workout with you so you can get it done. And the last doctor, but certainly not the least, is doctor sleep. It is not overrated. We need to go to sleep. You need to get your hours in. There's no such thing as life without sleeping. You cut your life off, off when you don't go to sleep. When we go to sleep, we shed cells. You know, we're supposed to get new ones on. But if you don't go to sleep, this new ones is not going to come. So if you want to get up, actually have an e-book of all of these eight doctors. If you want that, you can grab my card, email me, and I will send you uh, the e-book just so you can have it in your face. It truly do work. I can promise you there's not a lot of guarantees in life, but this is a guarantee from the wellologist. If you visit those eight doctors daily, you will live well. So it boils down to it chooses, makes you eat well, it makes you move well, it makes you breathe well, it makes you sleep well. That is the formula for living well. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions? I know we have to get out of here, but anybody have any questions for me and Tabitha? You guys are good? Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Can we just have a group picture? Yes.
What's your reference, photo reference, and then? What's your reference? Yes, but uh, but yeah, but I, I need I need the photo reference. Excuse me. What, can you get a picture with me and Tabitha? Yeah. But the other um, photographer gave us the number. Could you help her? So to, she has her own laptop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
yeah, it was different. You know, when I talk in German, it's much easier because yeah. it's the way you feel you talk. But it was good. You know. from Germany? Yes. Yeah. Well, where are you? Yeah. You're from which part? You know. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Where in Germany are you from? Hi. Hey. I'm from, uh, I live here in Lady now, but I'm, I come I'm from, from um, do you know Cologne? Cologne? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's one hour from Cologne. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, not for run, but for uh, I've been here for one year now, mm -hmm. and I'll stay another one and a half years. Yeah. Have you come for the education store? Here today? Yeah. Um, I came here because I'm a writer, so I um, I I'm a writer. Yes. Wow, can I get a card? Yes, of course. Um, I'm a counter. A counter? Yeah, nice to meet you. Are you from Delhi? No, I'm from Chandigarh. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. You're liking the content. This is your presentation. I love it a lot. I love to meet people. Yeah. I can tell you're so friendly. You just give up until my shoulder. You're so friendly. What did he just say to you? This is so Same here.
sometimes the sessions are smaller so towards the end. Well, I had to enjoy this session I didn't have good audience because when my speaker was speaking, the audience was choked off. But when I spoke, nobody came in. Nobody was, nobody went out also. They stayed. They were stuck to the things. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And so there was just children jam-packed. you want to go to the next slide? Oh, this is really dark in here. Um, so anyway, there's bunk beds. You can see they're just crammed in this room. And the kids were just, there was way more kids than should be here. Um, and so they were having a hard time day to day meeting the needs of basic needs of feeding these children. And so Celeste was working um, with the orphanage to meet basic needs. And so um, one particular night she went to bed um, just racking her brain with anything that she could do, anything else she could do that she hadn't thought of to help feed the children. And she, she was praying about it and she went to bed. She woke up in the middle of the night, 2.30 in the morning, she sat straight up in bed with a question running through her mind. Have you asked what the girls are doing for feminine hygiene products? And she hadn't, that thought hadn't occurred to her. So she ran to the computer, she emailed the orphanage director, she was in the US then, um, and she said, what are, the, what are the girls doing for feminine hygiene? And it was, it was daytime in Africa at that time. And so he emailed right back and he said, nothing. And she said, what does nothing mean? And he said that they're sitting, the girls sit in their room on a piece of cardboard for the whole period. And because there's not enough food anyway, no one's bringing them back food, so they're not eating at that time as well. And so she went into, okay, fix this problem. So she did what I would have thought of doing, disposable feminine hygiene products. And so she got people to donate disposable pads and she went to Kenya and she delivered these things to the girls and she knew that this was gonna have to be supplied month after month. And so she was trying to work with some different organizations to, to continually supply this to the orphanage. But what happened was, is she came back and not only was this something that was gonna have to be resupplied, she realized that there was a problem that there wasn't any place to dispose of the kits, of the, of the supplies. So there was literally along every chain link fence around this orphanage dirty hygiene pads. And so she knew that something different had to happen. So she um, created a kit. You wanna go up to the next slide? So this is her, um, she went and distributed these kits and it's a very different kit than we use now. This is on the 29th version. Um, and so she created something that could be used month after month for the girls. Do you want to go to the next slide? So, oh, actually go one more. <laughs> um, so this is a Days for Girls kit. Um, it can be washed with very little water. Um, it dries easily and it doesn't cause embarrassment because it doesn't look like what we typically think of as menstrual hygiene products. It lasts for three years and this is the 29th version. So what happened was is she went and, and she created a solution. She sewed it, she brought it to the girls, they used it, and they said, oh, this doesn't feel quite right if this was different. She was looking at how fast things dried, how long they lasted, how comfortable they were, and how comfortable they were across different cultures. So um, I'm just gonna, let's see. Come and just hold the microphone for me. Okay. You want to bring it up just so you can see. Okay, so the Days for Girls kits, they look like this. They come with a bag that has a nice drawstring to it, and the girls use these every day to take to school. They use them as like almost a little backpack. And the great thing about these are the they're beautiful, and the girls use them every day. So if there's not a stigma that, oh, they have the kits and they're on their period. They use them all the time. So with the kit, each of the kits come with two Ziploc bags, which we call the smallest washing machine in the world. I'll get to that in just a second. Each of the kits also come with two pairs of panties because sometimes where these kits are distributed, they don't have panties, so then they can use the kits. Um, each of the kits come with, <laughs> can you hold this for a second for me? <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so each of the kits comes with two shields, and the shield looks kind of like a pad with, with wings, and there's a waterproof liner that's sewn in the inside. There's a pocket in the top and the bottom, and there's a snap. So it's snapped underneath the girls' panties. And then we have liners. 
And the liners, this is the absorbent part of the kit. <laughs> thank you. I'm trying to juggle. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So this is the absorbent part of the kit. It's two layers thick in the center. We call this the hot spot. And then it's thinner at the top and the bottom to have less bulk. How so, is this not used? I'm, I'll it's show you in just a second. So you trifold it, and so it's the, it's the most absorbent right here, and then it's the thinnest where it goes into the pockets. So this is a inserted just like this. And then this is designed so that you can put up to three deep in here to manage flow. So when, let's see, so we'll stick another one in here. <laughs> I always need more hands when I'm doing this. <laughs> so, so when the girls are on their period, they take a Ziploc bag with them and some extra supplies. They get in each kit, there's two of these shields and eight liners, and they take a Ziploc bag and they go to school. And then while they're at school, when they go to the bathroom, if, if one is dirty, if they bled through one, they'll just take out the top, insert a clean one, and then they'll put the dirty ones into the Ziploc bag. They'll seal it up. They'll stick it back in the bag. Nobody even knows it's there. They can continue to put the dirty ones in there throughout the day. They can stay at school, stay at work, whatever they're doing. Nobody even knows that it's there. And so then when they get home, what they'll do is they will put a small amount of water into this bag. It can even be gray water, like um, dirty dish water. And so they'll put just a small amount of water in here and let it soak for just a little bit. They'll massage it, get the dirty, the blood out, and then they'll pour a small amount out in the latrine or the toilet, wherever they have access to. And at that point, then they wash this with soap and water. They wash it, and then we teach them to hang it up outside in the sunshine. And it's important that it's hung up in the sunshine because that disinfects it. If they don't have access to sunshine, like where they live, um, if they can't hang this up outside, or if they live in a really humid climate, like Thailand, the Philippines, places like that, then we teach them to iron it because that will disinfect it as well. So we teach the girls how to use these kits so that they can, they can avoid infections, so that they're not used improperly. So these kits, if they're used right and the girls take care of them, this will last the girls for, for three to four years. Every month they'll be able to use this and have what they need to um, stay in school. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so you can go on to the next, the next slide. So how Days for Girls is doing this is we have a hybrid system of volunteers and social enterprises. So right now, current numbers, we have over 4,000 individual volunteers that are registered to sew for Days for Girls. All of these things are hand sewn. Every single one of these kits is hand sewn by someone. So we have over 4,000 volunteers that sew in their homes to make these kits. We also have um, over, right now, this is the last count, it's climbing every day, but 963 volunteer teams and chapters that gather huge groups and so have big events. They have people donate um, materials and all the items in the kits and then they sew the kits and then we go and distribute the kits. We also have social enterprises right now in 17 countries. Um, so let's go on to the next one. So teams and chapters, this is actually the area I'm, I'm the director over all the volunteer side of Days for Girls. Um, so we currently have 963. Um, I'm gonna keep going. So there's thousands of women that want to help and they're, they have these huge events, all different people through all walks of life that come together and sew these beautiful kits. They donate items and it's really, really amazing. We currently have um, about 100 groups in Canada, 150 in Australia. There's groups all over Europe, Africa, Asia, um, and a lot in the US. 
Um, can you go to the next one? And this is actually, a, can we qu play a quick video? It's a one minute video. Yeah, yeah, please do. So I don't, yeah, oh, we'll go back. There should be a play button on this screen, in between on the black screen. If you go, on this screen there's a play button somewhere. Huh. It's not there. Okay, well. Enterprises in 17 countries. This is our center in Nepal. 
um, and the enterprise members keep all the income that they earn. I keep going. So this is a picture of where we have programs and currently in operation. The yellow is where we have centers, um, and the blue is where we have chapter and team locations. Keep going. So Days for Girls kids are always distributed with health education. Around the world, there, in many areas, there is a lot of shame that goes along with having a period. That people see it as something bad and wrong, and that it's, it's something that they feel a lot of shame about. And so Days for Girls, um, we go in and we always do a training. We have a whole training program. Um, it can take anywhere from about 30 to 45 minutes to do the program up to about three hours if we do the full program. And we go in and we teach the girls that there is no shame in having a period. That their bodies are beautiful and special exactly the way that they are, that having a period is part of a healthy woman's body. And we go through and we teach the girls anatomy that about their body. We teach the girls that they have a muscle that boys do not have, and it's called a uterus. And it gets, it's small, it's about the size of my fist, it fits right here, it gets big for a baby, and then it gets small again. And we teach the girls about their menstrual cycle, we teach them how to stay safe, we teach them the things that they're going to need to know. Um, and we, it's really, this is actually just as important as the Days for Girls Kids, because this opens up conversations um, that the community can have, and that this can be discussed. Um, these are some, these, I'm teaching these classes and all these, this, when I was um, distributing Days for Girls kits in Haiti in November, um, and this is, I was in, actually in India in January, this is a picture of me distributing kits um, in some leprosy colonies in um, southern India. Do you want to keep going? Um, and then this is a picture at in India with Rising Star Outreach. Carrie is representing Rising Star. It's this amazing school um, for um, kids from the leprosy colonies, and we did some classes there again in Haiti. Um, these classes are eye-opening for women. I sat in classes with women that were pregnant that didn't know how they had been, why how they were pregnant. Um, I've been with people that a 16-year-old girl that found out that she didn't have AIDS because she had been bleeding for the last four years and she found out because of these classes that she was having a period. So these, these conversations and these, this education is so important. And the beautiful thing is that when we educate a woman, we educate generations. And so she teaches her children and it just changes everything. Okay, you can go on. So as of right now, over 650,000 Days for Girls kits have been distributed Woo! worldwide. I know, yay! <laughs> um, in over 100 countries, and I love this picture because it truly shows the joy that the girls have when they get these kits. Um, a lot of areas that these kits are distributed, girls don't have access to a lot of things, a lot of new things. And so when they get these kits, they're bright colored and they're beautiful and they're soft and they they are given something for having a period. The boys don't get these and they're given and they, they just love them. They just touch them. They're so soft and they, I mean, when we start doing the classes and they know what we're talking about, a topic that they have felt shame about, you can just tell that they're quiet and like, ooh, this is what we're talking about. But then as we get going, I mean, it turns into a panty party. I mean, it's like, woohoo, I'm a girl, this is awesome. It's just, it's really, really wonderful. Um, the girls just really start to feel that this is a celebration of womanhood, and it's really empowering for them. So um, absent rates typically drop anywhere from, if it's in the 25 to 36% range before, it now goes to 3 to 8%. So the really important part is that when, they, when girls have access to the supplies that they need to manage their period, they can stay in school, which is really, really important. So some things that girls say about getting days for girls' kids is they say they're easy to use, I like how it feels, I will not miss school, I will save money, portable, I will not go to my boyfriend, no fear, last a long time, it will help me to be smart, it lasts, not ashamed, it will help with my work, more study time, won't leak, 
I won't smell, I will help others, I will stay clean, confidence, keeps me safe, be more like a woman. You can keep going. Um, so our path forward, Days for Girls, is working to provide health and dignity to women and to empower women. Our goal is to reach every girl, everywhere, period. And that doesn't just mean a kit in the hands of every woman. It means that every woman has been reached, that she has access to somehow a way to manage her period in a way that feels good to her. And that she, she knows that a period is a part of a healthy woman's body. And so we are working to do that. Um, so Days for Girls, of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, Days for Girls is working to, on 10 of those actively. Keep going. Days for Girls has been featured in lots of different, um, amazing, different places. Um, keep going. Um, so anyway, I'm really grateful to be here with you guys, and um, thank you. <laughs> you have any questions? <laughs> it's all donated. Yeah, we have some corporate sponsors. Um, we have grants that we're getting. Um, and a lot of the corporate donations and the grants are being funneled into the social enterprise side, the volunteer side. Each of the teams, all those 963 volunteer chapters, they're pretty much self-sustaining. They are reaching out to friends, um, different people, and they're getting donations of money and actually in-kind of materials, and then they're creating the kits and then donating them. So yeah, so it's all been donations. So we are going back again to our old traditional way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes, it's, that's a really good question. It is yeah. very monitored. Um, we have more centers that are starting than we now say are enterprises because the training process is rigorous. So for you to say that you're a fully trained one that is on our website and listed that people can go to, um, you have to have been certified. Um, so there is a process and I can, I can let you know a little bit more about that. Um, we have a director that's over the social enterprises over Asia and um, South America, and then we have another one that's in the Middle East and Africa um, that that are the people that actually work and certify the centers and stuff. I would yeah. like to connect on, uh, offline and understand how one creates a micro enterprise center okay. if we want to look at I would it. love that. We don't have one in India yet. Yeah, that's So we're that would be amazing. Yeah. So yeah. we have the kind of, you said, donated materials. People love the parts that go in the kit 
we're very careful with that as far as it being stain hiding. Yeah. Um, and so it's this, yeah. these parts are supposed to be darker and they need yeah. to be a pattern um, so that even as the pattern, even as the fabric starts to fade, then there's still a pattern to it that will hide the stains. Um, and then this part is the part that has to be the very most stain fighting, um, but it's designed to not look like, it's not white. It's, when you hang it up outside, it's designed to look like a handkerchief so that you're not hanging feminine hygiene products out on the clothesline. While so. washing it, I want to know, is there a special detergent also? Because the stain has to go yeah. to a greater extent. So Maybe. different different cultures end up using different things, but we teach them to just use soap and water. If they have something else that they can use, but we have to be careful that it, it will not, it's not too abrasive, that it won't harm the fabric. But I have found that Different places, like in, for example, two places that I've been recently in Haiti and in India, women there are like really good at laundry. <laughs> like, I mean, they can get stuff way cleaner than I can get it in the U.S. And so, they as soon as we teach them to do it, they're like, oh yeah, they <laughs> they rock in that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this is part of the product. I want to know the aspect of you know because a lot of stigma is attached to in India regarding the menstruation. Yes. Uh, about in, uh, the girls, and you don't talk about it, you are supposed to keep it as a secret. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little kind of thing, you know, untouchability also attached to things like that. Yeah. That is also one reason. So, do you, your education package, which mm -hmm. is there when you are uh, under health education and when you're educating them, does it cover the stigma part also yes. and to have dignity and pride? Yes. That you are a woman, kind of yes. Does it cover that? We also? definitely talk about that, absolutely. Okay. That's a really important part. And I mean, we we teach, yes, we teach that um, that women are are still clean while they're having their period, yeah. um, and that, it's it's in, for example, and we it depends on where we're at. We try to get to know the culture of where we're at, um, so that we know what things specifically need to be addressed. Um, like in India, you know, so women can't touch food, you know, while they're on their period, or different things. Um, in Nepal, Days for Girls has, has partnered with the government and is doing a huge campaign um, because there's a whole thing in Nepal where girls have to go to a menstrual hut while they're on their period, and there's a lot of problems there. And so um, we're working with the government to do a whole campaign to, to eradicate that. So we just want to keep girls safe and, and to empower them. Yeah. No, but uh, for just uh, for making this and for... Uh, for giving them for donations, you need some money. Yes. So please. how do you how do you get to do those needs? Thank you. That's a great question. So um, people, anybody can donate by going to the Days for Girls website. It's www.daysforgirls.org, and if you pull up the website. But then why should they donate? Like what? Why? What? Uh, why should they do? Uh, what? What? Uh, like you need some investments for this, for making this, you need some investments. Yes, so we No, I have not finished right. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> for this you need some investments. And for the investments you need, you need, the, uh, you need some uh, cash with you. But then, you are saying the people will donate the cash. But why should they donate? Why, what, what connection would you make to them? So are you talking about when enterprises yeah. sell kits? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about that. Just the donations? If, yeah, if you are, for making this, for just buying the cloth, you need some you need some cash with you. So that's a great question. Yeah. So people can donate and we need lots of people to donate. We need big corporations to donate and we need individual people to donate. That was my question is why should they donate? Why? Why will why will they donate the why would they donate? So from my experience, yeah. people end up donating because they find out that there's a need that they didn't know that existed in the world. Depending on where they live, they they might have always had access to, to the supplies that they need and then they find out that there's women, there are sisters in different parts of the world that don't have access to that. And so when they find that out they are drawn to either get involved in different ways. Sometimes they donate, sometimes they want to get involved in sew, but whatever they're doing, 
they want to get involved. So that's the reason is that they want to help. Yeah, in your, in your side, I saw many people working for you. Yes. Right? But for them, you need to give them the, you need to give them the salaries. So that's a good question. So we have volunteers and we have enterprises. So the volunteers, all the people that you saw that were sewing for us, they were all doing it for free. Okay. They were donating their time to help us make these kits to take them to different places that need them. Separately, we also have in-country where we teach women to sew and then they sell the kits and they get to keep the money. So it's two separate things um, and it kind of depends on where you're at in the world. Um, so does that answer your question? Yeah, you did, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, thank you. Well, thank you guys so much, thanks for being here. <laughs> this was wonderful. This was really wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So can we have a group picture?
disintegrating this yeah. country. <laughs> That's it's really great. You know, so, so because this is the place where we can think about the change. That's yeah. yeah. Okay, we need to know what's our lobby. Okay, yes. He's here, so we just Okay, yeah, I'll just run up and I'm going to change clothes just to look better. Do you want to say something? Oh, no, no, I, it'll always be fine. You're the older guy. Yeah. Okay.